Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can decode run length encoded format in the context of Cocoa datasets. If you missed the last video, we talked about how to encode Cocoa formatted run length encoded encoding. So make sure to go back to that if you need some extra context. And we're going to jump right into how to do the decoding now. If you saw the last video, you'll know that we have this Python notebook. Uh, make sure to check out the links in the description for access to this code. The, the arrays that we're working with are, we have these two images. Um, one of them is created, it's a smaller image, and one of them is a larger image. The smaller image looks like this. The larger image is a checkerboard. And so what we want to do is take our counts array, the run length encoded array, and convert it back into an image like this. So we are going to start with the small image here. So I'm going to run this cell, which tells it to use this variable. And then I'm going to go back down to the decoding section. And we'll start out just by making sure that we have a run length encoded array. And I'll just Run this really quick just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got this list. We want to bring it back and turn it into an image again. So the naive approach, the slow approach here, is to basically make our list and just go through here and just add zeros and 255s to the list until we get our image. So what we would do is we would enumerate this array, meaning that we get each count, but we also get the index. And we'll say if it's an even numbered index, then we're going to add zeros of length count. So we start here, we have a zero. So we're going to say we're going to add 10 zeros. That's what this says to do to our list. And then we go to the next one and our index is odd. So we'll add some number of 255s. In this case, it's one. And then we'd add six zeros, and then two 255s, and then five zeros, and then three, and you get the idea. Once we have that, we have to just calculate how many are left, how many pixels are expected to be left. And the only way we can do this, by the way, is if we know the width and the height of the image. If we don't, this whole thing gets messed up. So it's really important that we know the width and the height of the image coming into this. But that shouldn't generally be a problem. It is, in fact, provided by the Coco dataset here. So that's why they provide this size here and the counts is so that we can figure out how to decode it properly. So once we have that, we're able to fill up the array all the way. And then we just reshape the array so that it's in the shape of an image. So we shape it by height and width in the order of F, F I think stands for Fortran array, which basically tells it which way to go, whether it should go row by row or column by column, and then it'll return an image array. So that's the, that's the slow version of it. And now we can talk about a faster way. So we wanna use NumPy here, just like we did in the encoding phase. Since this is slower as we're just going through it, it would be better if we could use NumPy and take advantage of that underlying C code that goes so much faster. So well, I guess I, I may have, I'm intended to put this up here, but this shows, this shows the output. So it looks very much like that image that we have here. You can see those values just right there. So we can tell that this is, this seems to have worked. Now getting this to work, with NumPy was a real challenge for me. I spent a couple hours on it at least trying to figure out how to do this. And I swear I've, I've tried this in the past and I just couldn't figure it out, but I was stubborn enough that I figured it out this time. So what we do first is we create this array that is just alternating zeros and 255s. That is the length of the run length encoded array. And the idea here is we've created space and we want to create, in this case, the number of zeros or 255s that match up with this right here. So like 10 zeros, one 255, six zeros, two 255s, and create this sort of uneven array that 
stacks up all of these things. So this, when we run it here, um, it ends up looking like this when you use this numpy np.repeat function. But this is one of the few functions I was able to find where I was able to pass in a list um, of like lengths and get it to give me what I wanted here. But this is basically exactly what we want. We just need to reshape it into what we need here. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to do an append here where we do have to put on a few more pixels at the end, basically. But this is our completed array here. So this is basically the flattened array that we had when we were decoding it or encoding it. I apologize. And then finally, we just have to reshape it and we end up getting our image. So now we've done this entire thing without any for loops. We're just using NumPy functionality. And then just to confirm, so we've got this im underscore array, same thing coming into here. We're creating an image out of it. And it, it's really tiny. It's super small, but it's, but it's actually that same image right here. I'm not going to try and zoom in because when I tried to zoom in in the last video, it didn't go very well. And um, so the next one, I just want to go up and actually switch to the larger image before I do anything further. Yeah, like I said, it always seems to get stuck because that's such a huge amount of text in there. So now I'm going to run this so that we're working with the larger image. And come back down here. And we're going to, I think, let me just make sure that I do this right. Yeah, we want to, we want to get a, um, we want to encode this really quick. So I'll just encode this so that we get the, we get the RLE array that we can use. And then here's the same exact functionality just put into a function. And we'll just test it out really quick. And there, here's the, the result of that. You can see it looks different because we were doing the checkerboard effect. And we'll display it really quick just to make sure that that worked. So we're, we're getting that same image that we, that we encoded earlier coming back out. And then to give you an idea of what the performance difference is here, we're going to run this a thousand times for both the slow and the fast and show what the result is here. So the cool thing is that decoding seems to be quite a bit faster than encoding in the first place, um, but the but we're getting quite an improvement here also. Uh, we don't get quite the improvement that we did uh, in the encoding phase, but still this is four times faster than doing it the naive approach. So that's the basics of how I mean, now you've seen, if you saw the first video and this video, now you've seen how to encode and decode, and you can use this as you need to in your projects with just Python, not taking any new dependencies. All right, that's it for our two run length encoding videos. Hopefully you found them helpful. Uh, I know that this is something that I struggled with quite a bit to figure out how to do just in Python and make it performant. So hopefully you benefit from my struggle. Uh, I want to thank again our patrons and all our supporters and also just mention that if you're interested in more Coco stuff like this, we do have a page on our website already that has basically a rundown of how the Coco dataset works. We've got another video on how it works too. And we have a course on how to make Coco datasets from scratch and it's not by hand. So making them by hand is really slow. Turns out there's a better way. It's easier and you should check it out. Now that's at the time of this filming, we have an older version of the course. Um, we are looking into up, updating, upgrading this course, adding some more content, uh, making it as good as possible. So I haven't actually started on that yet, so uh, I don't want to overpromise, but I think it should be pretty cool and coming out hopefully pretty soon. So if you want to stay in touch, make sure to follow us on social media, subscribe to us on YouTube and you'll be hearing from us soon. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.